I do want to be part of the national debate. I think our country is in trouble on spending. We've uh, botched our founders' view of federalism, that is, power devolved to the states. Today on the caucus, a conversation with Virginia Governor Bob McDonnell. He worked his way up the Republican ladder in Virginia, from state delegate to attorney general and now governor of the Commonwealth. Along the way, he's become a voice Republicans across the country are listening to. We sat down with him in the ceremonial cabinet room in Richmond's Capitol building. Governor McDonald, thanks for joining us at the caucus at the New York Times. Glad to be here, Mike. Thank you. Uh, before we start in with some of the other questions, let me ask you about the tornadoes that uh, swept through the South and, and uh, unfortunately killed some folks here in Virginia. How do things stand at this point? Uh, I can tell you it's, uh, it's a real blow. A lot of these have been in rural areas uh, of, the, of the state. Uh, we've got some discretionary money. I've declared disaster uh, a state of emergency here in Virginia, so the discretionary money that I've got available will be able to help. I did speak to the President and Secretary Napolitano yesterday. And uh, assuming we can meet the federal thresholds for a FEMA or federal de de declaration, that'll trigger more relief. But until the full disaster analysis is done, we don't know. But I, it is a time of uh, a tough time in, in Virginia. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the 2012 presidential campaign. I heard there was one coming there was, up. There is one. Um, wh which of the Republican candidates, or maybe the potential Republican candidates, do you think are talking about the right set of issues? Well, I like governors. And I'll tell you why, not just because I'm one, uh, but I do know from the office that the buck stops at your desk. So that doesn't get me very far yeah. though, to a specific person that you well, like, get you down so, many of, so many <laughs> of them are governors, including yourself. Uh, Mitch Daniels? I like Mitch Daniels. He's an exceptional uh, governor. He's, uh, he's one of the first guys I talked to after I got elected because he had such a successful uh, reform agenda in Indiana on big things. Uh, I think Tim Pawlenty is a world-class guy, major accomplishments in a blue state, got a very good style about him. He's built a rock star campaign team. Mitt Romney would have to be considered the front runner because he's, he's been there before. He acquitted himself well uh, four years ago and his expertise is on the things people care about, which is spending uh, and economic development job creation. Newt Gingrich was one of the best idea guys in the, in the history of the Congress in recent years. I think he will have some great ideas to put on the table. Uh, that contract with America really, really changed the way Republicans approach government. Do you think Sarah Palin could be the right person for that job? I don't think she's going to run, uh, just from every sense uh, that I've uh, got. Uh, she has certainly added to, added to the debate uh, by her uh, stances on federalism and spending. You said uh, recently, I think, that Donald Trump was engaging in straight talk and understands what it takes to grow jobs. That sounds like an endorsement to me. Well, it's not an endorsement. There are a lot of people <laughs> that are talking about that. But do you, do you I think, think, do you think Donald Trump has been, has been doing straight talk with all of the talk about the, the, the president's birth certificate? And is that the kind of no. conversation that you want to have? I think those are side issues. I wish everybody just leave that alone. It's been resolved. The president's an American citizen. The problem's not where he was born. It's what he's doing in the White House. Fast forward a little bit more than a year from now, and your phone rings. And it's one of these folks that we've been talking about asking you to be the vice presidential nominee. <laughs> do you do it? You know, Mike, that's a, that's a great what if. I think anybody who gets that call would, uh, would be honored and flattered and would certainly have to consider it. I'm not expecting it, and I want to be part of that debate in the best way possible. But first and foremost, uh, I've got the best job in America, a job held by Thomas Jefferson and Patrick Henry as governor of Virginia. So that's what I'm engaged in. But I'm, I'm not expecting that call. I want to help us win next year. Uh, <clears throat> let's move on to the, the political fight in Washington over the nation's debt and yes. its deficit. But none of the plans really do uh, what governors have to do, and that is balance a budget every year and uh, get us out of debt in any, any short order. You, you uh, would want to go further and faster? Absolutely. And what we have is uh, decades of Republicans and Democrats in Congress over-promising and over-spending, and now the bills are due. Politically, what do you say to your colleagues, especially in the Republican Party, you're on, up on the Hill, uh, who worry that those cuts are perceived negatively by their constituents? And the question is not what's a winning political formula. The question is what's right for our country. And of course, when you reduce spending, there are various interest groups and various uh, people that are not going to be happy in the short run. But I think you've got to make the case and be honest and be straightforward and look people in the eye and say, this is what we need to do. You know, the doomsday scenarios are always out there and that, that pressure makes people come to the table and negotiate. Same thing with a couple of weeks ago, the threatened government shutdown. There. I, I'm going to express the confidence that they're going to find a way to get that done because I see more Democrats realizing now 
that the top issue facing this country is jobs in the economy and economic opportunity and controlling taxes and spending. Social issues, gay marriage, abortion, should those issues be part of the discussion and a key part of the discussion that Republicans have? Absolutely, they should. They're these issues of life and family and, and marriage should really go to the heart and soul of what we believe is a free people. But sometimes those issues have a tendency to crowd out the issues that you said were most important. True, but that doesn't mean you don't talk about them. It means you keep them in the proper context.